Okay, so I launched it and it's live. Hi. I'm, I'm Michael Shaw, publisher of Reading the Pictures. I have Kara Finnegan here with me. I'll introduce her in a second. Uh, we're the 13 year old nonprofit dedicated to the analysis of news, photos, and cultural images. Um, this is a new uh, format for us and uh, an experiment. Uh, we are creating what we call our micro salon, uh, and uh, our intent is to do about a 25 minute live broadcast uh, on Facebook, um, looking at three photographs drawn from uh, headline news stories. So uh, if you've been uh, following us for years, uh, you'll already know uh, Kara Finnegan. She's a professor in the communication department at the University of Illinois, where her research explores the role of uh, photography uh, and the role it's played in the history of U.S. public life. And she's the author of umpteen books, uh, including <laughs> Making Photography Matter, A Viewer's History from the Civil War to the Great Depression, and uh, picturing, po picturing Poverty, Print, Culture, and FSA Photographs. She has also served as the moderator of our salon since 2008, and I will also say that she knows more about White House art and also the way it shows up in news photographs than uh, probably anybody else on the planet. So um, we're going to talk about three photographs today, uh, one from the Women's March, uh, one um, uh, about the Larry Nassar trial and just the sexual abuse um, subject in general, and then uh, one photograph um, uh, uh, dealing with the government shutdown and, of course, our illustrious president. So um, let's uh, let's jump into the first photograph. And uh, Kara, why don't you, you can introduce it. Yeah, I'll get us rolling. Um, as Michael said, this is a new experiment and we're really excited about uh, kind of bringing the salon format to, to uh, all of reading the pictures is family with uh, uh, in a kind of micro new way. So uh, let us know what you think. This first image is um, a photo by Melissa Bender. Um, the caption is Women's March, New York City, January 20th, 2018. Um, I love this photograph for so many reasons. Um, I think obviously it's not only timely in terms of what's been going on in the news, um, but it gives us um, just kind of so many ways to think about what's been happening in the last year uh, in terms of uh, women becoming more politically mobilized, um, it also invites us to think about um, institutions and questions of race, I think in particular with uh, the photograph of this police officer. So visually, um, one of the things I think Bender uh, captures really nicely here is we get both, it's this really individual portrait. Uh, it's, it's this um, woman uh, who is uh, not only doing her job uh, fully, but appears to be enjoying doing her job. She is uh, photographed, uh, you know, face on, um, wide, broad smile. And she's also got all of the tools of her career kind of at her disposal. So what I love <laughs> about this photograph is it just shows a professional in a public setting doing her job and enjoying herself. Um, the other thing I'll say before I kind of toss it to Michael for some of his comments is um, the presence of the barriers uh, in in the uh, on the left and then in the background on the right of the photograph, um, to me, kind of signal this is a large public event. It needs to be managed. You can see the marchers in the background on the right on the right of the frame, and then um, some standby uh, some men standing by, kind of bystanders on the left. And there's this wide space between. So the photograph, at the same time that it presents this. Uh, professional police officer, uh, this African-American woman doing her job uh, in a very kind of open, friendly way. We also get the sense that there are institutions that need to manage these kinds of events um, as well. And, and then there is that one little visual detail um, that you uh, <laughs> might at first miss because you're so drawn to this woman's um, uh, warm, open face, but it's you see- Politics of that. color. Punch of color. So, Michael, do you want to talk about the punch of color there? I'm just, I was just jumping in there for a second, but you know, I, I, I think color is so political right now. I just look at these red ties and the white sh shirts and the suits and uh, the the Trump uniform. From you see them on kids, you see them on certainly all the syncophants and uh, uh, 
And yes, that little spot of color, or that little splash. And she also has, and the the uh, keychain, I think, that has like a, a little red dealy bob thing on it. So it's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a whistle? I don't know what that is. Yeah. Maybe, I, it must be a whistle. But so the, the, that's a little dialogue. But yeah, to, you know, obviously it's African-American woman. This picture has a lot to do with race. Um, and then you have the blue and blue stands for the police and the, then, and then the pink pussy hat, which is just, it is, it's sort of like sticking out of her like, uh, pant pocket. And it is so funny. It's sort of like, uh, you know, she's really proud of the fact that it's sort of just a, 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 a um, uh, an accessory. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I was, um, uh, I apologize for making a visual reference to a photo that maybe some people haven't seen, but there's this really famous photo, I think, by Dorothea Lange in the 1930s of a police officer at a rally. And um, I think it's a sheriff's deputy. And he's this big guy with this wide rear end and he's leaning over something and she shoots him from behind. And he's got you see his gun very prominently. And this is a photograph she made in the South in the 1930s. And I thought about that as a juxtaposition where here you have the right, the, the, the woman, uh, uh, the police officer, this woman is doing her job. She's clearly in professional mode. But you have this kind of connection to the marchers, to the to the uh, audience she's going to be working with today in the form of the, the, the pussy hat just sort of tucked in. And so to me, that as opposed to, uh, you know, a more obvious confrontational kind of weapon, you might say, or something else that a police officer might carry, I thought was was. It was kind of it interesting. Sort of like as a well. weapon, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you're right. I think, I think it is, and it's also, it's, it's also, I think, a mark of her professionalism in a way to sort of shrewdly say to folks that she's going to work with all day long. Um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to you, right? I'm not impeding you necessarily. Um, you know, whatever her personal views about the march or yeah, I'm a friendly uh, uh, pussy hats in general. You know, but I mean it. It makes you want to know the story. This is such a, you know, Bender, Bender does such a great job with this image of trying to get you to think, well, what's the story? Did she bring that? Is it her hat? Did somebody give it to her? And was she, did she kind of laugh and say, oh, hey, thanks and put it in her pocket? You know, what were the various ways that this might have happened? And I yeah, just, there's I a think couple that's of really interesting. A good photo, especially a good news photo. I think it's really hard for a news photo to get you to kind of spin your own stories about like, where did that come from? I'm interested. What? And to be fair, though, I think um, I pulled this from Instagram and um, Melissa Bender shoots a lot of politics and a, and a lot of protests. So in a way, it's sort of, you know, f expanding our criteria. You know, it's not exactly a, a news photo. And but to go back to what you said at the beginning, I mean, I, I can't look at this picture without also smiling. And, and then you start to think, like, you know, what happened to joy? You know, it's just I mean, can, can we have resistance and then also enjoy it or do it with a smile or I mean in a way it's just then points to how much the culture the atmosphere politically right now it, and what's emanating from you know the this the Trump era is this sense of negation and the sense of gloom and 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 uh, apocalypse and defeatism and this just comes right out and blows that apart and I just think that it's so powerful and you get that just unconsciously, you know, looking at this. And then the other yeah, thing I love. It's a good portrait. I mean, it is a portrait of this woman. It's a bit. Uh, at this is. moment doing the, her job, but it's a great portrait for all of those reasons. You just it really said. is. Yeah. It's super warm. It's a, but it's, a, but it's also like, to me, it's like saying, let's defeat defeatism. Let's negate negation. You know, it's like, wow. I mean, it's quite a, quite a rebuttal. And then it's also an amazing rebuttal to the authoritarian state. And, you know, Right now, um, you know, with ice raids and, you know, this this says, hey, you know, not so fast. You know, you, you can't say that the, uh, you know, that the system, the establishment, the military and uh, civil defense industrial complex is, is you know, is going to fall that quickly when you look at a photo like that. And I think that's, you know, really important because sometimes we get caught up in all the you know, the buzz and the paranoia. And then it feels like, you know, the, that there's going to be, a, you know, that we're going to lose our democracy. So I, I think that this, this is also great. And it's also great in the context of Trump's race baiting and how much race and immigration and the women's movement and democracy all ties together. And I, I think this is also really powerful, like kind of horizontally 
you know, ties all those different um, issues together. So I, I love the photo. I love it also very much. Yeah, and it just it challenges the stereotype of what um, what certain institutions look like, right? And that there are people who move across institutions who have multiple identities, and and it's just um, um, totally both that's both that's a good thing, and also that's a thing that people need to remember too. Yeah, and that there's challenges of being people in those positions for sure. Should yeah. we move on to the next one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the second photo um, <clears throat> was taken. Uh, during the trial of um, Larry Nasser, he's the former USA Gymnastics and Michigan State University doctor who pleaded guilty to seven counts of criminal sexual conduct. Um, and uh, the judge who had a lot of discretion here uh, in terms of um, the proceedings uh, allowed seven days of victim impact statements. She said that anyone who had been abused by Nasser could uh, confront him. A total of 156 victims um, uh, spoke. Uh, some of them were just saw what was going on and, and came forward um, after having been anonymous. Uh, and um, it just was a really powerful event this last uh, this this last week. And in some ways, it had the feeling of a truth and re reconciliation. Uh, process uh, and how interesting is that with you know the Trump in the White House um, and uh, in contrast to like the awakening of you know this uh, sexual abuse and the Me Too movement. So um, the caption reads specifically: uh, "Victim and former gymnast Bailey Lorenzen speaks." Um, and I did look her up. Um, she's 22 now. Um, she had been anonymous in the court filings. Um, she was abused by Nasser when she was in the fourth grade um, and a competitive uh, gymnast. So, uh, Kara, why don't you like uh, go, go ahead and and, and uh, uh, riff on this picture a little bit? Yeah, it's, it's yeah I'm happy to dive photo. in. Um, uh, I think the first thing I would say is I wish that the caption, um, and I don't know where the caption came from. I wish it described her as a survivor instead of a victim. I think um, I think these women are all of those things, but I think the, this is, to me, this is a photograph of a survivor confronting a person um, uh, who uh, assaulted and abused her uh, and committed grievous wrongs. And one of the things to me that's most powerful about this photo is, um, it demonstrates kind of what photography does, which is photography uh, can stop time. So you have on the right, uh, what I assume is a projected photograph of Bailey as a younger uh, person. Um, I assume that was projected in the courtroom. Um, and I saw some other images of these during the proceedings where they were doing this with each of the uh, women who spoke. And so you have this image of her at perhaps, you know, um, around the age where, where where he was still abusing her. And then you have her in person today um, looking directly at him. Um, the fact that this is shot from behind, the defendant of course allows us to see both of the images of her, which I think is really powerful. It also puts the viewer um, in a pretty interesting position because we are in a sense um, positioned behind the defendant, behind the person who committed these crimes. And so in some ways, this photograph invites us to think about the way that we might have failed Bailey and, and these hundreds of other uh, girls we have to own it. and women as well. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's a lot that's fallen out from this trial in terms of what various people in various institutions did and didn't know, um, what they should and shouldn't have done. And that those conversations are incredibly important and are going to continue. And to me, this photograph really embodies that. It, it you know, she's looking at him and she's addressing him. But I, as a viewer, am standing very uncomfortably behind him, and I have to acknowledge that in some way. Uh, and so I think that uh, this photo by McDermott um, uh, kind of really performs that complicity, that question about complicity really powerfully. Well, it, when we talk about the difference between uh, victim and survivor, and then we talk about just how up until very recently, there's a sense that uh, there, that women should uh, have felt guilty or ashamed for, you know, for going public um, uh, as uh, survivors of sexual abuse. 
this photograph really shows the sea change where uh, he's in a subjugated position and uh, and she, and then she confronts him in that direct gaze and also because of the image on the on the on the right um, you know he has to be responsible for her history and 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 what kind of alteration in her you know her growth or what kind of how, you know it, 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 that's that's on him too so i mean that direct gaze is something that I'm sure we're going to get uh, very familiar with it very quickly, but, but I think we're looking at something that's very new, very different, and very powerful. And, you know, I think when you talk about the gaze, if if we think about the previous photo where um, I'm going to move us back to that, where we also have a direct gaze with the photographer, uh, this uh, police officer is looking directly at us, the viewer, uh, but obviously very, very different um, kind of, affective or emotional relationship being constructed here. And, and so I think these photos and their, uh, what, what the photos might uh, have in common other than a, a, a general topic of women um, is the sense that the gaze itself and where the gaze kind of, um, how the gaze punctuates a photograph can be very differently powerful depending on the, the case. And in, in this photograph, I think you hit it. It's just, it's extremely, um, compelling and and serious and um, uh, one also I think ha is as a viewer you're also um, again forced to meet that gaze so you're forced to um, uh, kind of be confronted um, as a viewer of the photograph uh, by uh, by these uh, women by these uh, survivors of this person's horrible uh, abusive history. I mean, it's kind of it's interesting how it's not like two rights make two wrongs make a right or something, but it really strips him of his identity. It really makes him so generic. The fact that we just see the edge of his glasses, you know, um, glasses are so, such a personal item and 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 essential for sight, and they're blurred. And but you know, he's just this object, and you know, part of you wants to say, "Thank God," you know, uh, and and you start to feel that you know, the, the intense uh, you know, anger that, um, you know, that we have for not just him, but everybody else like him. And that's, and he stands for that in, in the way that he's depicted here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, he loses some agency, but maybe we, maybe that agency, you know, that ability to act then gets placed onto us because we're right there too. As viewers, huh. what are we going to do, right? Um, should we move on to our final photo? Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, a, another photo of the week. Um, this is uh, uh, a Doug Mills photo of New York Times. Uh, the caption is Donald Trump's hands are seen as he listens to members of Congress discuss, discuss immigration reform in the cabinet room of the White House, uh, January 9, 2018. So this is a photo for actually from a couple of weeks ago. Um, Michael, do you want to start with this? Mills is doing, follow Mills on Instagram, everybody. Mills is doing fascinating work uh, in this in this uh, White House stuff. But why don't I let you dive in? Yeah, um, Doug Mills, uh, shooting for the New York Times, is one of our leading uh, commenters, visual commenters, uh, especially here in the Trump era. Uh, of course, he's been uh, stellar for quite a long time, but What's really interesting to me, I've been looking at this very carefully, um, is how the uh, the visual, the, uh, the press corps, the visual press corps has been um, taking the opportunity to do commentary uh, on Trump um, when, uh, you know, he has so much power. So it's just, all these pictures to me seem like little mini editorials. And so... You know, if we if there was one picture that circulated, um, and there was a there was many, but you know, Trump d did this incredible move where he uh, had a photo availability for two seconds when he had this bipartisan group of senators and Congress people uh, to the White House uh, right before uh, the shutdown, and said, you know, uh, I'm going to sign any bill that you guys you know could come up can present present you know, on a bipartisan basis. And then he, 
as we all know, he turned around and, you know, pulled the rug out or Stephen Miller, you know, uh, channeling Trump, uh, pulled the rug out. But so in this 50 minute kumbaya session, you know, with Trump, uh, at least looking like he knew what he's talking about. Although if you read the transcript, he really was having a lot of trouble understanding the nuances. Um, you get this one photograph and it's amazing what it says to me. One thing it says to me is um, uh, Mills is telling us, I believe that Trump is whole MO here is about posturing. And of course it's also about narcissism because we're looking at Trump monogramming, you know, number 45 on, on his sleeve, wearing his branding and narcissism uh, on his sleeve. But it also is about like this whole meeting was about was about, you know, posture. <laughs> so I think it's really brilliant. Um, you know, I have other thoughts about it, but I'm interested in, in, you know, what else you're thinking about it or seeing here. Kara. Yeah. Um, the fact that it's black and white, I think, is everything um, to a certain extent. You know, people make lots of jokes about Trump being orange. Right. We know that. But um, uh, and, you know, gold and uh, branding his image in in, in uh, ways that we might say are warmer <laughs> in terms of color. And but the black and white, I mean, it does a number of things. In this case, the black and white is not so much documentary as it is, um, I think, just kind of fully aesthetic in a sort of straight photography way. It is. Um, it's a kind of breaking apart of pieces of Trump uh, in in. You know, I mean, this could almost be a photograph of, uh, you know, a worker's hand, or it could be uh, a painting. Uh, it, it's it's that uh, it's that abstract, but that abstraction and that breaking apart and that choice to use black and white, I think, is all tied completely to this notion of both revealing the posturing, um, revealing the branding. Uh, and at the same time, kind of fighting against it. So just the fact of focusing on Trump's hands as opposed to anything else. Um, so the black and white makes it clinical. Yeah, yeah, clinical, thank you. That's a great word to describe it. This is a clinical image. And and the, the choice to kind of disembody him and photograph him only in his hands, I think is also uh, perhaps an, an act of resistance on the part of, uh, you know, photographer might, uh, who 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 knows this is the op, right? This is the photo op. This is the moment you're supposed to go in and get the the shot of Trump looking like he's you know listening and and collaborating and you know caring about what other people in the room say and et cetera et cetera and looking presidential. And instead, you get the hands and you get the branding. And also that the hands are there's two things about the hands that the hands are crossed in a kind of body posture. I'm going to sort of sit up so you can see my hands. You know, that's a little more defensive, perhaps. Uh, uh, in terms of how you might read it, that's something. Um, I also one think step, that the hand with the 45 step. looks like a gun. It looks like he's doing finger gun. Uh, uh. Um, and again, <laughs> because of the level of my point isn't that, you know, he's like, oh, Trump is doing that. I will photograph it in a documentary way. I think the fact that the photo is abstract and kind of aestheticized in this way invites you to just sort of look at it for these shapes and these other um, connotations or these other uh, references. Yeah. Um, I want. I want to just pick up on one thing you said, which I think is really important. And it's something I'm actually working on an article right now for Columbia Journalism Review. And um, what uh, I'm looking at hundreds and hundreds of pictures of Trump um, as they as he's been interpreted by, you know, these really stellar um, uh, Washington photographers. And what you see is the characteristic element across a lot of these photos, especially the ones that are more impressionistic is a sense of fragmentation. What comes through uh, consistently is that, you know, Trump uh, is not a whole person. You see him as a set of hands, you see him as a mouth, you see him with uh, in shadow, so he's, or like as a Janus head, so he's literally two-faced. Um, you just see all these, you, you see him like cut off at the edge of the screen, you see him going behind a barrier or peeking out from behind a door. It's just the sense that you don't have a whole person there. Or if you do, you have him, you know, switching different roles or manners or mo mo modes, sometimes because he can't help it, sometimes because that's his, you know, he's, he's 
not being genuine in a, in, a, in a more strategic way. So this really captures that, and I'm really glad that you you pointed that out. Yeah, and I think um, I'm really excited about this thing you're doing for CJR because um, I think only when you gather all of these images together do you do you kind of start to be able to see the visual patterns. Um, and uh, I, I think that it's um, one of the things I think that you know you and I have talked about that we're that we're trying to do with these micro salons is to try to pull images out of the news, but then maybe over time we'll develop some patterns uh, or some ways of thinking uh, about how the images are working that, um, you know, connect to other images. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, if we, uh, there are certainly ways that these three images um, connect today other than just kind of appearing roughly in the news at the same time. So, yeah. Well, this, well, this has is been, fun. Yeah, this has been fun. And, uh, Thanks for the uh, opportunity to discuss in a micro fashion. I love micro. Well, hopefully, I think the intention is for us to do more. And uh, certainly, there's no shortage of great material uh, every week. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that these, these photographers' uh, work today shows that for sure. Yeah, well, I think it's cathartic also for us to be able It's It's also speaking truth to visual power and a way to cope with the oppression you know, of the day, you know, for us to be able to look at these images and how much they are pushing back and how much they present like, a, you know, a, a re, a, like, as you said, a form of resistance also. So um, yeah. thanks for joining us and uh, you'll be seeing us again soon, hopefully. <laughs>